Hey everybody, I got a package from Out of Darts with a sample to try out, which I was pretty excited about. I have two boxes of worker darts. I have this 0.9 gram lightweight dart and this 1.2 gram heavyweight dart. Before I go any farther, I'm going to tell you for a really in-depth, more scientific review, you should really check out a video by Bradley Phillips or Naptown Nerf or Jarek4. I'm gonna have some links down below. What you're gonna see in my video is just me and a friend going out, trying out some darts. We're actually shooting some BB guns. We just went out on a Sunday afternoon to kind of hang out and do the kind of thing that was fun when we were kids. One thing I'll say off the bat, I think for most of us, for a lot of applications, the lightweights are actually probably the better dart. Now, I thought I was going to lean towards the heavyweights, which, you know, makes sense. Throw a sock, you can only throw it so far. Put a rock in that sock, make it a little heavier, you can throw a sock a lot farther. I thought with some of the higher power blasters that I would see kind of the same thing, but really nothing I have was shooting a dart hard enough to really take advantage of that. Things ended up being more accurate with the lighter weight, even outdoors, as you'll see in the later video if you get through it. The lightweight darts were getting me around the same FPS boost as when I run bamboos, so I think the weight is fairly similar. And with blasters that were shooting around 160, 170, I feel like I was just losing using too much FPS. Part of the problem might be in the video that I was doing, the only blaster that I had with me with a scar, and my goodness, you need a scar barrel if you're going to try to be accurate enough to hit a can or something like that at 50 or 75 feet. I only have my Mark IV with me, and in order to use the scar, as most of us know, I couldn't actually have the higher FPS barrel on it. So probably I was firing around 165, 170 or so. And that was just not enough FPS to take advantage of that heavyweight from my on-scientific testing. I haven't even watched those videos I recommended yet. I kind of got a little bit into it, but I know that they go through the spread patterns. I've watched enough other videos before to know it's gonna be good. I'm gonna go in after and watch some of that myself and learn a little bit more. But for me, my next order of workers, I will probably get some more of these lightweights. And I mean, hey, I'm still a sucker for the regular old one gram-ish worker dart too. Those are great. Maybe you're newish to the hobby and you're wondering what's the difference with all these darts. The worker darts are generally a little bit shorter than a lot of our dart zone darts that we really like because we can get them off of store shelves, which is awesome. But these worker darts tend to run way better in a nightingale and a lot of the worker blasters and just generally seem to have a less feeding issues in angle talon mags and things like that. The glue on the heads of these are also very, very durable. We didn't have one single dart come apart with all of the firing that we were doing the other day. And the foam is nice and stiff too, which is important because if that foam gets kind of too soft and squishy over time, again, you're gonna get more jams. One thing you definitely learn as you get more and more into this is that there is not one dart to rule them all. <laughs> different blasters love different darts. That is a whole hobby in its own almost <laughs> of deciding which darts you like and what you like running and what works best for you. So go watch those other videos for the facts <laughs> and stick around here if you wanna see me and my friend hanging out in a gravel pit. Thank you very much out of darts for the samples. I think if I had a blaster that was tuned to be over 250 and then I put a scar on that and use those heavyweights, I bet you I'd have a very different experience. So I'm gonna have to work on setting up exactly that blaster. Till next time. All right, Dan, what are you firing today here on the, the plinking squad? Oh, sorry. Okay. I so ask you as you're setting it. It's all good. It is a classic Crossman 1008 repeat air. Do they make it anymore? I don't know. Who knows? We are not experts in this. We are sitting right now at 50 feet though, and we're gonna see if we can hit some cans. If I ever get this phone put away. <laughs> this is like a bad boys movie poster. <laughs> Let's see who can hit a can first, then we'll flip the camera around. I'm on the right, Dan is on the left. Let's see who can hit the most cans here. Oh. One. Oh. Two. A real fun fact for you, we should probably leave out of the video because I'm an idiot. I didn't actually put the speed loader in before, so I was like, something's not right here. I'm not seeing dirt jump. I'm not, I'm not that bad of a name. Oh, no, that's not getting cut out. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I knew as soon as I said it. Burn through some CO2. Oh, yeah, CO2 is cheap. I'm going to let you take a few shots, though. I only hit twice out of my 10 shots or so. All right, highest can up. See if you can redeem here. Ooh, close. There you go. Started out strong. I think we tied. We got it twice? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna go from uh, classic back, I, I say back in the day, 
BB guns, but the BB guns I used when I was a kid were like pumping 20 times. I had one of those. I had a Crossman, like, I think it was supposed to be pump six, but you could pump it like 30. Yeah, I, I don't even think I had a CO2 one as a kid. Like that. I didn't either. That was I pretty. I would have burned through them so fast. For sure. So we're, we're still at 50 feet. There is a bit of wind. What are we trying to prove here? Certainly not that one's better than the other. We're just kind of comparing uh, how it is to plink. I'm gonna do a mag and then I'll give it to you to do a mag. Sure. That works for you. Do you have the same darts in both mags? I do have the same, yeah, these are the worker heavyweights. And I'm at, I'm gonna take a few steps up to actually do 50 feet. I'm gonna do two or three shots at 50. If it feels impossible, I'll take a few steps up to 40 with this wind. All right. I'm like, I find it hard to aim down this one. Oh. It actually has enough juice that some kind of like forward and back sight would probably make sense. I have them. And I, oh, okay. I should put them on it. Okay. In fact, I'll put them on it. <laughs> you have them here. I have them here. So those last ones were actually the lightweights. These are the heavyweights. We put some sights on the blaster. Let's see if there's any difference here. Oh, I saw that one. That was just a bit above and to the right of the middle can. That was, that was close. That was the same spot, a little tiny bit lower. Just below the can. You're in a pretty tight grouping, actually. So I did a mag of the lightweights at 50 and did not manage to hit anything. You put on some sights and you tried the heavyweights at 50. And did not hit anything. But you came really close. I'm not much. sure that you thought I was close to the one I was aiming at. <laughs> That's true. But there was a bit of a grouping to it. You know what? I'll try a couple. Since you did a couple, I'll try a couple. With try it with it up because I feel it. Yeah. That's low. 50 feet is a That's struggle. A we also, we don't have a scar barrel on this at all. Foam blasters, you're not trying to hit a can. You're trying to hit a person usually, but it's good to be accurate. Uh, I'm going to try the Mark 1.2 with the scar barrel and see if we can hit something with that from 50. I was all set to show you guys the old 1.2 with this scar barrel on, but uh, I forgot the adapter. So we're going to try the Mark IV again without the barrel extension, which means lower FPS, but it means we can put the scar on, unless we're going to try that. Okay. We got the scar on. We're going to see if we can hit that can. Uh, yeah, you can do it. <laughs> hype man. <laughs> you are the hype man. Give it, man. You can do it. Uh, I, still, I still do not like these Mark IV sights. I think having these sights is better than just trying to eyeball down the top. <laughs> way low. Way low, yeah. Are they accurate enough that you could actually sight it in? Questionable. Some people would argue that. I would say no. I mean, a little bit. I mean, a little bit. You, yeah. I, I would, but I would say yes. Like, if you know where you're usually engaging with someone, you could sight this like in a little bit. ranges on here. You could. But yeah. it's, I mean, the problem is that, like, Darts are a lot more inconsistent than yep. bullets or BBs, sure. you know? For the ability to actually be able to do this anywhere and actually shoot at our friends, <laughs> we give up a bit of accuracy. All right, let's see what we can do. I'll aim up. Got it. Ding. The scar helps a lot. That was so much more accurate. See if I can hit one of these cans again. Don't worry, everyone. We will not be leaving all of this rock star in the woods. So less velocity. Less velocity. <laughs> and from 50 feet, thanks, 50 to feet the, he said. thanks to the scar. Takes that scar to make it spin. <laughs> thanks to that scar, we could actually hit our targets. Do you want to try a few of these with the scar? You know it. All right, All right. hyping Dan. Dan did manage to hit the can. I was not recording. <laughs> I've, this is a very professional video. He's going to try out the lightweights. He was trying the heavyweights before. I've adjusted the sight up even slightly higher than it was before. They're still coming in low. The lights aren't getting as that taken by the higher. wind as I thought. I don't know that I noticed a whole difference. Why don't we get some foam success here? And after you finish that, let's move it into like 30 feet and see. Cause we yeah. are right here, we're in a lot of wind. Let's get some, let's get some dings. Yeah, even like, I don't know what it would measure, but if you were just inside that burn there, so you not in the wind. Sheltered a bit, yeah, let's try that. All right, we have the red and purple heavyweights. Red and purple are the heavyweights, I think. <laughs> I thought red and green were the heavyweights. 
We have the scar on. Let's try to hit something at 30. Almost. Ding. Ding. Almost a ding. They're all going to the same spot. Certainly hit a person. Wind is just such a factor. Like the first time I played any games outside, I was like, oh, this is, I feel like my range of everything is like shrunk way down yep. from what I thought. This would be an interesting test to do inside a bit too sometime, but that'll be a different video. The sights are bang on right now. And actually like it's hitting where I'm aiming. That's it. I think there's like debate about it in the real gun community. My dad would say the front sight should be just under what you're actually shooting. So you should always see what you're shooting. Yeah, I mean, that makes, that makes a lot of sense. I'm gonna grab you a mag. Take a few steps up if you want to be at a proper 30. Right away. Oh, that was a good ding. You gotta do it again though, because I was moving, trying to make you look cool. You're moving it again. There we go, there it is. You gotta hit it now, because this is the best angle. Not gonna though, am I? Oh, that was like a hair. They're all right there, because I can see them in here. Hey, there we go. Uh, that's how we do it. <laughs> you wanna try the lightweights? Sure. All right, there goes Dan Lightweight Culverson. Is that already? Uh, I might be already primed, sorry. Overthinking it now. There you go. I feel like at 30, you could learn to hit them intuitively without the sights so much. Yeah, for sure. Do you think with all of our new skills, what if we move back 10 feet and see what we can do from 40? Well, I don't feel like I'm gonna get any better. Let's give it a try. Here goes the champ with the lightweights. See if he can hit something at 40. I don't even know if there's one in there. Oh, I'll get you a new mag. That's close. Oh, that still had another one in there. Do not use <laughs> other Talon mags in the Mark IV. Eventually, over time, they will stress the feed lips and break. Oh, you go. No, you give it a try. Consistency. I'll just coach you like a rally car co-pilot. Hi. Do you know which one I was going for? Bottom can. <laughs> no, I was going for the one above. You were just above the bottom can. So, okay. so blow into the left of the one, the other one. Okay, and I keep going for the one to the right. Just above the bottom. Oh! Did that hit something and then hit no, it? No, no, that hit the can. Yeah. Didn't, didn't make a very loud ding. No, it hit the can from 40. Are those the lightweights or the heavyweights? Those are the heavies? On high left. Yeah, those are heavies. Yeah. You wanna go? Yeah, I'll give it a try. I'm gonna go all the way back. Back to 50. Maybe we've just learned a bit. Dinger. Ding at 50. Just to the left, but the height was right. I think the wind is lower right now yeah. too. And I do think we've kind of gotten used to the sights a bit. Yep. Cool. Uh, you want to break out some BB guns again? Sure. All right. Me making everything content gets annoying at any time either. You're welcome to uh, <laughs> say, can we just hang out? It's all good. If my hype gets annoying at any point, no, let me know. Never. I've not fired a pellet in a long time. Just head yeah. down in there. Yeah, that's the 22 pellet. Okay, cool. So like slow when it hits me. Push them in flat? Yep. No, the, tr the safety is a trigger safety that goes forward to, un to take the safety off. Okay, cool. All right. How's the sight? It's pretty accurate? I mean, it is for me. Man, that green it, is so easy to I see. I measured it at like, so we set it up in my dad's basement at I think 25 feet and I was hitting bang on. That was like a couple years ago. <laughs> Sounded like a dinger. Oh, did I hit it? I thought I missed. No, I'm pretty sure that went right through it. I should have brought a folding table, I know. I feel like that can. From 30. BB Desert Eagle. 468. 405. 471. 475. 496. 404. I gotta admit, this thing, this thing fires harder than I realized. Crossman 1008. 318, error, 323, 320. I don't know what this is either. A Crossman Phantom. 436. Your pistol hit as hard as this does. <laughs> Which makes sense, your pistol was dinging them. Yeah. That's consistent. That's what I kind of remember. Because we tried it at Dad's and I'm pretty sure 
I was happy with the accuracy, happy with the consistency of the FPS, but I wish it was like 64 this time. That shit is gunning. Probably just to be able to say 500. Yeah. <laughs> well, 495 is the legal limit. Oh, okay. I'm going to try the Mark IV. I have the lightweight darts in, the red and purple. I'm going to try it with the scar. Red even... and purple is heavy. No, it's light. I think we mixed them up a bunch. Red and... Great test. Very scientific. Oh, super scientific. That's I what we the do. the other one said like 652 and those ones say 655. Or maybe I was looking at a serial number. I don't know. I was looking at a label underneath that says lightweight and heavyweight. Oh, I didn't see that at all. <laughs> all right. So with the scar, 171. Like, that's pretty good. 172. Pretty consistent. Now with the heavyweights. 150, 163, quite a difference from those heavier darts. I am going to put on the other barrel and let's see what the maximum is, even though we can't hit anything. What you really want is you want something with a nice long barrel that with a scar is hitting like 250. 184, and again, that's with the heavy. 174. Not much better than the scar. With the, not, no, the scar doesn't make, a good scar doesn't make too much difference. Here's the lights. No, but in theory, the scar is supposed to drop to 165. No, sorry. Without this is like supposed to be like 160 or so. Oh, okay. With it adds. That's what I'm saying. It's not, that one did. Yeah, that one. That's and this, with the lighter That's dark. with the lights. Yeah, that makes more sense. 195. Yeah, yeah so you're getting two. Yeah. It looks like the lightweight darts are very similar to the Dart Zone bamboo darts as far as what FPS you're getting. So that's interesting. When I say final, y'all say thoughts. Final. Thoughts. Final. Thoughts. We did a whole bunch of plinking. Dan was kind enough to uh, be really patient. Uh, that's fine. So I'm going to give a little bit of a preamble. Obviously, these things are all really different. They're both enjoyable. There's a lot of good reasons to plink with your foam blasters so that you're better at actually playing games. Obviously, a big advantage that this has over something like this is that you can actually fire it at your friends. I'm going to say it was a lot of fun plinking out BBs. I really enjoyed that. CO2 is kind of fun. This is why I want to do a series of videos, paintball, airsoft, whatever, kind of comparing them all. But here on the downside, I will say a big place for this wins all of the customizing you can do, reusing your ammo to a point, but also the fact that you don't have to drive into the middle of the woods to feel like you can actually do this. We, we could have done this in my basement. What I was going to say was, I feel like if you're coming this far out in the woods, which has its own joy. Yep. Like I like being out in the woods and the wind and yep. rocks and bees buzzing around our heads and things like that. I feel like I would pick BB for that. Yep. But definitely like so much more versatile to play with foam around yeah. home. Yeah, I think, I mean, I think that's probably a conclusion that most people will come to. And most of us who like doing this, I get kind of uh, annoyed when people are like, oh, bro, airsoft, bro, over. But like, obviously- and From where you and I live, this is a 45 minute, 55 minute drive away. Right, like, like we're in both, we're both in pretty urban areas. Like when we were kids, we could have probably played with this in the backyard. But I, I did play with that in the yeah, backyard. Yeah, I don't even know that I would play with this in the backyard of my parents' place now, though. Not with a pistol. No. Like if it just. Anyone sees you. And it's funny, like, there's no. I mean, obviously, yeah, this video will never be monetized, I'm sure. There's no yellow markings or anything on that. Again, we're on. We're in a private area. We're, we're very safe here where we are. We both have done, you know, safety courses and things like that before for, you know, using actual weapons so we're being really careful and safe with these i think in canada too i might be wrong you can cut this out if it's useless information i think you're not supposed to have yellow and orange on a bb or pellet gun oh because like it should be treated like a real gun interesting like by law enforcement and stuff oh that that makes sense because yeah. if you were supposed to i'm sure it would i mean this yeah. came from canadian tire it didn't come from like the back of somebody's trunk or anything right. i thought it was pretty interesting i didn't think that this was going to do very well from 50 and it did really well. I actually, before we go, I might take a couple more from 75 and see if I can hit something. It's funny, this did not do very well, but once we put the scar on, it made such a difference. So with the scar barrel on, you know, we were getting like 160, 170 with the lightweights. So if you actually had a blaster, if I had my Mark 1.2, which hits 220 with my bearing scar, I think we would have seen more success from, from 50 feet for sure. But also wind is, brutal for darts. I'd be curious to do this sometime from inside the cafe. From yeah. 50 feet. I think too with a gun like that and even like we were complaining about those sights and then we decided we liked them or whatever. 
but like if you had something that marked where the dart was hitting you could have fun trying to get pretty accurate because i think that would be pretty accurate with the sky on it and like a target that you can i think see your so groupings. well yeah. accurate enough like and maybe you know for for maximizing fun a can might not be the best target for sure like, yeah but, sorry know. for maximizing fun i like knocking them over and stuff yeah true but for maximize like if you wanted to be the kind of person who was seeing if you could get it dialed in. Yeah. A piece of paper where you could see the marks. No, okay. for sure. Walcom actually has like a digital target, okay. which like shows when you hit it with a dart. Yeah. I think it's actually rated for airsoft too, which whatever type of screen it is, but it actually like shows where you hit and averages your score and shows all your groupings and everything. Oh, that'd be so, fun. Thanks so much for watching this. I don't know if you enjoyed it. I don't know if you got anything out of it. I will. I got something enjoy? out of it. <laughs> we had we had fun. I might, uh, there might be some B-roll at the end of me firing uh, this pistol, which actually hit the hardest of anything of the day at just under 500 for some of the shots and seeing if I can hit some cans from 75. It's all fun, guys. It's all fun. Just be safe, whatever you're doing. Be safe. <laughs> Hype man to the end. This is pretty far. I'm going to be this curious. This is quite far, yeah. I mean, actually, this is over 75 to the cans, probably. So I'm going to go back foot on the line here. Can't wait to hear the critiques on my shooting stance. That was pretty close. How's the hit? That was hot. Too hot. Shit. Not bad. This is a pellet with a rifle barrel. Oh, yeah. 328. High? High, yeah. Just to the left. Just below. One of those might have been a hit. If we set up two cameras, like pros, I might need to uh, throw a couple dirt in oh, that from, from here? 75. They're not even getting there. They're not getting there? The first two you shot are hitting this like rock sticking up like in, oh. way in front of the tripod. Oh, okay. Hold on then. That was close. Got it. It wasn't carrying much when it did hit, but it got it. These are all pretty close. Yeah. One thing that surprises me a little, I prefer the lightweights, I think, all day over the heavyweights. I, I think the drop I was getting, at least at our FPS, like maybe if you had a blaster that you purposefully tuned that would fire 300, you put the heavyweights in it and a scar and bring it down, like maybe that you'd see the benefit of the heavies. If you were hitting people from 10 feet away and really wanted to make it sting. <laughs> for sure. I would say for everything we did today, we had more success, both of us had more success Agreed. with the lightweights. Yeah. Lightweights, yo. <laughs> not very scientific though. Before we go with the ultimate caliber here. I'm pretty sure you're not supposed to hold it like that by your eye or something. I'm not sure how accurate you could get with that, but you get accurate enough to hit a person and it would really sting. It, it, it would. Can I try one? Yeah, I'll try one. Masters of every type of projectile throwing thing. Not by your eye? Not by your eye? You just don't want the band to break and go in your eye. Oh yeah. I don't think I'll put this footage anywhere. Where are you supposed to go if you're not by your eye? Like under it. I think I've been doing that wrong my whole life. That feels awkward. Maybe I'll just put on safety glasses. You're not supposed to do it this way? I think that's fine where you are right there. You do it this I way? That's bad? No, you pull it back by your teeth or something. I don't know. <laughs> Yours didn't make that can dinging sound. Is there no. a reason for that? Or? <laughs> because I was aiming at the rocks over there. <laughs> oh, I see. I'd do another one, but I already got to hit the can, so I'll just let you have these tries. I think there's something. I should probably YouTube this, whatever the maritime foam of slingshot is. They pull it like here. And then somehow, if it breaks there, it doesn't get you in the eye. <laughs> that seems like a good idea. Oh, that was almost a can. That was, I mean, I'd call that a can. <laughs> <laughs> Let me see the size of one of those BBs again. Oh yeah, it's pretty big. All packed up. This is after the gravel pit. <laughs> <laughs>